Hello there, fifth graders. It is Friday today, and hopefully you are finishing up writing your informational essays. I want to show you another example of one. This one is about World War II. I started showing it to you yesterday, to some of you yesterday in the Zoom. Um, but I also want to go over the entire thing with you now, since yesterday I was mainly just focused on, on going over the first main body paragraph with you. So this is an informational essay on World War II, and hopefully it can serve as an example for you as you're finishing up your informational essays about the gold rush. Notice it starts off with a title, and it's a simple title, World War II. If you want to come up with something um, with more flair for your informational essays, that's fine. But you could also just make the title The Gold Rush, like I made my title World War II, since it's an informational essay about World War II. Terrible battles, entire nations in chaos, atomic bombs. World War II was one of the deadliest times in all of world history. Why did it happen? How did it affect the world? What was life like for the average soldier? Notice that this um, introductory paragraph starts off with a hook, artful sentence fragments. Then it goes right into the topic of my informational essay, which is all about World War II. After that, it introduces my three main ideas. Why did World War II happen? What effect did it have on the world? And what was life like for the average soldier? Then I go right into my three main body paragraphs. My first main body paragraph will be all about my first main idea. Why did World War II happen? It'll start with a transition phrase, first of all, then it'll finish the topic sentence, why did World War II happen? Every other sentence in this paragraph is a supporting detail sentence, so it'll be all about why World War II happened. First of all, why did World War II happen? One thing that led to the Second World War was the fact that Europe was left very unstable after World War I. Once World War I ended, harsh terms of surrender were forced upon Germany. This led to discontent and discouragement among the Germans. Partly because of how discouraged they felt, the German people turned to a man named Adolf Hitler, who rose in power as the head of the National Socialist Workers' Party. That's also called the Nazi Party. When Hitler invaded Poland, England, and France, when Hitler invaded Poland, England and France declared war on Germany, beginning World War II. Okay, that's my first main body paragraph. Now, this is my second main body paragraph. Notice it starts with the transition word second. Then it finishes off the topic sentence, how did World War II affect the world, which corresponds to my second main idea shown here, how did it affect the world? So the second main idea that I introduce in my introductory paragraph is, my sec is what my second main body paragraph will be all about. Second, how did World War II affect the world? It affected the world in really big ways. Because World War II was the deadliest war in all of world history, many people who would have lived long lives didn't. Another way World War II affected the world is that it changed the balance of world power. In response to the devastation of the world, 50 countries around the world formed the United Nations. The leaders of these nations at the time hoped that forming the United Nations would prevent another, world, another war like World War II from happening again. The United Nations has drastically changed world history by making it so that many nations throughout the world strive towards common goals. Okay, so that's my second main body paragraph. My third main body paragraph, lastly... It starts with a transition word, then it goes, then it finishes off my topic sentence, what was life like for the average soldier during World War II? Notice this is my third main idea that I, that I go over at the end of my introductory paragraph. What was life like for the average soldier? So that's the question that I'm answering in my third main body paragraph. Lastly, what was life like for the average soldier during World War II? After my topic sentence, all the other sentences my, are all supporting detail sentences. So they'll all only be about what life was like for the average soldier during, during World War II. I won't go into any other idea 
throughout the rest of this paragraph. Life for the average soldier was very difficult during this dangerous war. During the war, soldiers were in constant danger. Tens of millions of soldiers died on both sides. On top of this, many Allied soldiers were taken prisoner and put in, in, and put in Japanese or German prison camps where they suffered great hardship and were often mistreated. And now my, um, and now the last paragraph in this informational essay is my conclusion paragraph. And it has two jobs. Its two jobs are to restate my topic and restate my three main ideas but in different words so that it's not repetitive. And it restates my three main ideas in its first sentence, and it restates my topic in its second sentence. Notice it's only two sentences long. The conclusion paragraph does not have to be long. It just needs to do its job. Restate the topic and the three main ideas. World War II took place because of unresolved issues from World War I. Notice that's my first main idea. Why did World War II happen? It had a major effect on world history. That's my second main idea. And the soldiers who fought bravely in its battles suffered greatly. That's my third main idea. But notice I put all three of my main ideas in different words than I used when I, when I went over them in my introductory paragraph right here. I express the same three main ideas, but I use different words. World War II took place because of the unresolved issues from World War I. It had a major effect on world history, and the soldiers who fought bravely in its battles suffered greatly. And then I go back over my topic, which is World War II. It, that's, that's World War II, it was a deadly time of great suffering for the entire world, but it was also a time of great heroism. And I'll attach this informational essay underneath this video to this lesson so that on top of watching this video, if you want, you can reread this informational essay yourself and just kind of get a even better idea of what a well-written informational essay should look like when it's finished. Also notice there's not a lot of mistakes in this. There's not, you don't see any words underlined in red because there's no words spelled wrong. Also, all the sentence structure is really nice. You can read this entire thing out loud and it all makes sense. So when you think you're done with your informational essay, what you should do is read it out loud to yourself. Make sure all the words are spelled correctly. Make sure all the sentences make sense. Make sure they all flow. And then you should also read it out loud to someone else. See what they think of it. Read it out loud to your mom or dad. Read it out loud to a brother or sister or even a friend. And you can have it read out loud to you using um, the read out loud tool, which for some reason I don't see on my page right now. But there's a tool you can use to have it read out loud to you. And then, and then you can hear it. The, your computer will actually read it out loud to you. And if you have that... And if you have it read out loud to you and you follow along with your eyes on the page as it's being read out loud, you'll, you'll be more likely to catch mistakes. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Make sure you do your best and go back over your work, read it out loud to yourself, have it read out loud to you and read it out loud to somebody else and fix all the mistakes as you go, because your paper will have mistakes. Don't think it's done just because you've typed the last sentence. It still needs to be revised. All righty. And I will catch you guys next time. Signing off.